Decades of Jupiter observations have revealed something strange. People of all ages and from all parts of the world are fascinated and enthralled by the science of astronomy. People have an insatiable desire for learning more about the universe, making space documentaries surefire racing winners. But not all myths about the universe are real. You've probably heard the tale of how Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system, serves as our ostensible valiant protector. Without Jupiter, asteroids and comets would repeatedly strike the Earth, making it completely uninhabitable. The only small flaw in this fantastic tale is that it is untrue. Or, to put it another way, the story is much more complicated than that long-standing myth would have you believe. Join us as we explore the story of a planet with a split personality, as scientists reveal that Jupiter is not what we're being told. Let's take a trip back in time to the year 1770 to begin our tale. An astronomer by the name of Charles Messier found a new comet just a few months after Captain Cook's initial landing in Australia. You may already be familiar with Charles Messier. He was the inventor of the Messier Catalogue, a list of the greatest clusters, galaxies and nebulae in the night sky that has come to be considered something of a Bible for astronomers. The amazing thing about Messier's inventory is that it was never meant to serve as the foundation for a beautiful tour of the cosmos. That was Messier's list of hazy objects in the sky that aren't comets. Messier, a devoted comet hunter, spent his nights studying the sky with a telescope, looking for fuzzy moving blobs in an effort to identify these spectral passing visitors. Also, he kept stumbling into additional fuzzy blobs as he searched the skies. In order to keep track of all the fuzzy objects he observed in the night sky that was stationary and constantly in the same location, he made a list. The objects that at first glance might have been mistaken for comets, but were in reality something entirely else. The renowned Messier catalogue was thus created. Messier did manage to uncover a few true comets over the course of his career, in addition to discovering and cataloguing more than a hundred of the sky's loveliest fuzzy blobs. The comet he discovered in 1770 was possibly the most impressive and intriguing of the comets. The comet swiftly increased in size and brightness over the following few nights, becoming visible to the unaided eye. But it didn't take long to realize that the comet appeared odd. The comet's head was unusually huge, several times larger than the diameter of the full moon, as opposed to having a small, clearly defined head and an impressive tail. The comet, which was vast, fuzzy, and bright enough to be seen even from the centers of largest cities, was at its closest point to Earth on July 1st of that year. It tore across the sky at an unprecedented rate. After that, it started to diminish, but continued to be visible for a while. In fact, Messier himself made the comet's final observation in October. What had taken place? The comet was remarkable in several aspects, including the way it appeared, with a big fuzzy head far larger than normal for a comet. It travelled oddly, ripping across the sky far more quickly than comets often do, up to 42 degrees in 24 hours at its fastest and it quickly and surprisingly brightened. Astronomers quickly understood what was happening. The comet, later dubbed Comet Lexel after the mathematician who was initially determining its orbit, had passed extremely close to Earth. In actuality, it was, and still is, the closest cometary flyby of Earth that has ever been observed. The comet was only 2.2 million miles away from Earth at its closest, about six times farther from Earth than the distance to the Moon. It was because of this closeness that the comet moved swiftly across the sky, taking on such an odd appearance and brightening so quickly. Nevertheless, the same research that provided an explanation for those peculiarities also revealed another oddity. They showed that the comet had a short orbital period of 5.58 years. It was a comet that is now referred to as a short period or Jupiter family. So that's all well and good. The inner solar system now has several hundred such comets. But Lexel's comet stood out for its brightness. Why hadn't it been seen before? 
Why was it not observed in 1764 or 1759 if it were to orbit the Sun every 5.5 years? It almost appeared as though it had suddenly accelerated toward Earth. When scientists extrapolated Comet Lexel's trajectory backward and forward through time, they discovered that Jupiter, the most massive planet in the solar system, was to blame for the comet's abrupt appearance and equally abrupt disappearance. It was discovered that the comet had travelled on an orbit that would have brought it nowhere near the Earth in 1767, when it had instead approached Jupiter. It was probably one of the group of objects known as centaurs, which are ice cometary nuclei kept in cold storage in the outer solar system. Nevertheless, as it swung past the greatest planet in the solar system, Jupiter's gravity seized hold of it and pushed it inward, causing it to change to a new orbit with a period of 5.58 years and bringing it dangerously near to Earth. In other words, it tossed something at us that never would have reached our planet otherwise. That clarified the reason for the comet's unexpected entrance. It was a newcomer to the inner solar system, hurled in our direction by the whims of Jupiter's powerful gravitational pull. Yet why was the comet ultimately lost? Actually, the planet and the comet kind of had a reunion just 12 years after their initial encounter. Jupiter was waiting for the comet Lexel as it swung out to Aphelion, which is the point in its orbit where it is furthest from the Sun. The comet once more swung towards the enormous planet before being launched outside of the inner solar system. Our observations from its 1770 apparition aren't good enough to pinpoint exactly how that encounter with Jupiter would have gone, so it's unclear exactly where it ended up. Yet one thing is certain, Comet Lexel was propelled onto an orbit where it could no longer pose a threat to Earth and was ejected from the inner solar system, out of harm's way. At least for Comet Lexel, Jupiter played both a villain and a hero in a matter of 12 years. All of this reminds us of the famous astronomical legend about Jupiter, the great defender of the Earth. Does our enormous neighbour actually protect us from collisions and provide us with the room we require for life to exist and flourish on Earth? Or does it serve a more sinister purpose, endangering Earth with debris from orbits that would otherwise pass far beyond it? The Comet Lexel story provides a clue as to the solution. Jupiter's role is far more nuanced than simply serving as our guardian or a cosmic bad guy. The planet, if anything, has a two-faced nature, with Comet Lexel serving as the perfect example of those two faces. Jupiter has a dual personality. One of them is of that as an ally. After all, Jupiter does direct some potentially dangerous objects away from Earth, preventing a collision with our planet. Jupiter does, however, have a negative side. It has the ability to move things that would normally never come close to our planet into orbits that pierce the inner solar system, endangering life on our planet. As a result, Jupiter is neither a friend nor an enemy of the near-Earth asteroids, but rather a middle ground. But there is yet another issue that has been added. We believe that an Earth free of impacts would be ideal for life, which may imply that an Earth without the presence of our massive neighbour would have been more ideal. Would it truly be better if impacts occurred less frequently, though? Would we be here right now to study more about Jupiter's influence if the reign of the dinosaurs had not been tragically ended by a rock from space? Looking further back during the formation of the Earth, it's possible that impacts from asteroids hurled our way by Jupiter were a significant factor in ensuring that the planet developed into the wonderful habitable world we know today. The Earth might have been completely dry, a desiccated husk of a planet, without the frozen bodies hurled our way by Jupiter from the outer asteroid belt and outer solar system. Hence, the solar system would seem considerably different without Jupiter. The Earth would be struck less frequently, probably much less frequently, although that might not be a good thing. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. 
While you're still here, click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.